Hi everyone, and welcome to episode two of FastLED Basics. If you're just starting with FastLED, it's a good idea to check out episode one, where you can learn how to set everything up, how to power your project, and how to light your first strip. In this episode though, we'll be having a look at how FastLED deals with color. The topics we'll cover today are RGB, so setting and reading colors from your LEDs, and HSV, so why do we have a different color system, and what are the advantages of this over RGB? Uh, setting the overall brightness of the display with uh, fast LED or set brightness uh, and setting color correction and color temperature as well. Dealing with color is a fundamental technique in fast LED, so hopefully by the end of this you'll have a much better understanding of how to do it yourself. Let's start with RGB as this is probably how you've dealt with color if you've done any programming in the past. Our eyes contain three color receptors, one for each of red, green and blue, although in reality the red receptor is more sensitive to yellow and orangish colors. Every other colour that you see is your brain sort of making it up uh, by combining information from these three receptors. Mixing colours of light together works differently to mixing colours of paint. For example, with paint, if I was to mix together uh, green and blue, we'd get this sort of dark turquoise kind of colour. If I was to mix together uh, red and green, for example, I'd get a sort of muddy brown. This is known as subtractive colour mixing, as we're subtracting the wavelength that our eyes see the resulting colour is darker than what we started with. Light behaves differently. Here I have red, green and blue light. If I mix red and blue light together, I get uh, magenta. Mixing green and blue, I get cyan. And mixing green and red, I get yellow. If I mix all three colours together, uh, I get white, and that definitely wouldn't happen if we were using uh, paints. So this is known as additive colour mixing, as we're adding to the wavelengths that our eyes can see. By changing the relative amounts of red, green and blue, we can make any other colour we like. When we're using fast LED, we're playing with light, of course, so we are using additive colour mixing. So how do we do this in fast LED? The CRB object uh, is a structure that represents a colour in RGB colour space, and it contains three bytes of data. Uh, one byte, uh, that's 0 to 255, representing red, green and blue. So to set an LED to a bright yellow colour, for example, we could simply do uh, LEDs I, so whichever LED we're interested in, equals CRGB 255-255-0, uh, because yellow is produced by having full brightness red, uh, full brightness green, and uh, no blue in there. We can also change the red, green, and blue separately. We don't have to set them all at once uh, by using, for example, uh, LEDs I dot R uh, equals 127. We'll just set the red component of that particular LED. If you want to copy the color of an LED to another LED, that's easy to do as well. Uh, we, for example, we could say LED zero equals LEDs one. So that will just copy the color that's in LEDs one into LED zero. There are many, many more methods uh, available at this link. So I encourage you to have a look at that and see how you can manipulate uh, RGB colors. Let's use this uh, color picker here to set our entire strip uh, to a particular color. So let's go for, um, let's go for this, this colour here, sort of a bright green, um, like a slightly paler green. And we can see here that the values are going to be 120 for red, 255 for green and 15 for blue. We have a couple of options here to fill the strip uh, with that particular colour. Uh, we could use fill solid like we did uh, on the last video. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here, though, is I'm going to do it as a loop. So start at zero until we get to the number of LEDs we've got um, and then I plus plus. And then we're going to set each LED just to that sort of greenish color that we picked from the color picker earlier on. Uh, and this is what that looks like. Not particularly exciting, but you can see that it does work. Instead of doing that, um, we could actually change these. So let's have a little mess about with some of these numbers instead. Remember, this one is for red, this is for green, and um, this one's for blue. So as we go along the strip, um, let's change the, the values of R, G, and B. So let's do something like I times, uh, I don't know, 20. Let's go for I times 20. 10 and maybe i times 30. It looks like a bit of a mess uh, and that's because we're just randomly changing basically the, the red, green and blue values here. It's hard to make anything that looks sort of coherent um, using just RGB. And so although using RGB is easy enough to do, uh, we can very quickly find the limitations of the RGB model for LED strips. Let's say we wanted the LED to cycle through various colors all at full brightness. Um, how would we do that with RGB? Well, basically, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, you can see here, as I move the selector along through the various colors, uh, we've now got green increasing, we've got red decreasing. Uh, in a minute, we're going to have blue. There you go, blue starting to increase, and now green's decreasing again, um, and red's increasing, and it gets pretty complicated to uh, to program this to, to happen. And this is something we want to do quite regularly uh, with LED strips, for example. So what can we do? Well, this is where the HSV color model comes in. HSV stands for Hue, Saturation, 
and value. Uh, you sometimes see HSL, which in which the L stands for level, uh, but they're pretty much interchangeable for our purposes. If we move between the colors um, as we did before, you can see that out of H, S and V, it's only the hue that's changing. Now, normally hue is measured in degrees and it has a range from zero to 359 degrees. Uh, helpfully, it also wraps around on itself. So the hue at 359 changes smoothly back to the hue at zero. And this makes producing sort of rainbow effects uh, really, really easy. We can just keep increasing the hue to change between the various colors. Let's play a little bit more with this uh, color picker. So moving the selection up and down uh, changes S, the saturation. So if I keep this over on red, if we have watch the uh, S value just here, and it's the top here, the S is fully saturated, is 100% saturated. And as we move down here, the color becomes less and less saturated. And at the bottom, there is no color information whatsoever. Uh, so we can say that that's 0% uh, saturation. Finally, we have uh, V, the value. Um, Another way of thinking of value is basically brightness. Uh, so if we change this slider just here, we can change the value from 100% all the way down to 0% and uh, back up again. So you can think about this, as I say, in terms of being the brightness uh, of an individual LED. To keep things fast, uh, FastLED uses its own values uh, from 0 to 255 for each of these parameters. The image below there shows how the hue value uh, relates to the color, uh, with, uh, with red being at zero, blue being around 160-ish, and then we get back to red again uh, by 255. We can create an HSV color, just like we do with CRGB, uh, something like this. Um, so LEDs I equals CHSV, and then we have three bytes of data, hue, saturation, and value. And remember, each one of those uh, is between zero and 255. So if you want to set an LED to a greenish color that's completely saturated and half brightness, uh, we could do something like this. So 80 is the hue that represents green, uh, 255 is full saturation, and 127 is half brightness, because remember it's out of 255. We can also set the parameters separately using .h, .s, or .v. Again, there's loads more methods for talking about color and converting between HSV and RGB and all sorts of other stuff. And if you want to find out a bit more about that, which I really recommend you do, uh, have a little look at that link. Now we have control over those parameters, uh, we can do some more interesting things with our strip. So set everything up as normal. Um, I've created a variable up here, a uint8 underscore t uh, called hue and set it equal to zero. Remember, uh, uint8 underscore t um, is a number, an unsigned number between zero and 255. I'll explain why it's important to uh, have it as a uint8 t uh, in a second. Then we go into our loop down here. And so what it does is it fills basically all of our LEDs uh, with a particular HSV color. And so for the first go through here, hue is gonna be zero, which is a sort of red color. And we're gonna set full saturation um, and full brightness. Then over time, we want to change this hue. You see it says hue plus plus. And there's a couple of things that are really important in this function just here. We haven't really talked about this function called every n milliseconds just yet. This is part of a really useful class of uh, timing functions that you get in FastLED. There's every n milliseconds, every n seconds, and every n microseconds. And the reason this is so incredibly useful is it means we don't have to use delay. These are non-blocking um, timing functions. So what that means is we can safely use this. I think in the background it uses uh, timers and interrupts. Uh, to do this without blocking the, the, the normal program. So if you want to use timings, these are really, really good functions to use. So what I'm saying here is every 15 milliseconds, I want to increase the hue by one. So for the first go through here, hue is zero for all the LEDs. For the second go through here, hue will be one for all the LEDs. So you can see on the uh, image below there what that's doing to our strip. We're very gently fading uh, between all the different hues at full saturation and at full brightness. So really, really helpful. Now, one other thing to think about here with this Hue++ is, well, what happens when we get to 255? We don't want to keep increasing indefinitely, right? We don't can't have 256, 257, 258. And that's where this uint8 underscore t uh, comes in. Say it's 255. If you add 1, it doesn't go to 256. It goes back to 0 again. And that's exactly what we want to happen when we're scrolling through the various hues. So that's great. Uh, but so far, we're setting all of the LEDs to the same hue value. What about if we want to set each LED to a slightly different hue value to look like a sort of rainbow pattern traveling along the strip? Well, that's relatively easy to do. Um, we start with hue here. I'm going to add on to that I times uh, 10. So that means that as we go along the strip, the first LED will have a hue value of zero. 
The second LED will have a hue value of 10, and the third one will have a hue value of 20, etc., etc. Now, because we're moving the hue every time we go around this loop, we're increasing the hue by one. That'll make it look like the rainbow pattern is kind of moving along the strip. Let's change tack a bit, and let's say we want to make uh, like an icy or a cold kind of uh, looking pattern using mainly uh, blue pixels. Uh, we can do that. So what I'm doing is set up as usual. I have no change change there. Uh, I'm going to create a new um, color for LED zero. So that's the first LED in the strip. And we're going to use uh, HSV color. The hue is going to be 160, uh, which is a kind of blue color. For the saturation, I'm going to use random eight. Uh, random eight is a fast led random number generator. It's much faster than the uh, random built into the Arduino uh, normal API. So if you can use random eight, then use that. What it does, it generates a 8-bit number, so a number between 0 and 255. And that's pretty useful because uh, that's what we want for our saturation. And then for the uh, value, which is basically the brightness, I'm using random eight again. This time I'm going to put some um, arguments in there. I'm going to put 100 and 255. And here random eight will generate a random number between 100 and 255. So starting off by making that just one pixel by itself. Then we're going to copy um, each LED to the next one. So we start at the far end of the strip. Uh, so we say int uh, i equals num LEDs minus one. So starting at the uh, the end of the strip, the far end, then until uh, we reach the beginning of the strip, and we're going to subtract one from i each time. And then um, the lights or the LED that we're looking at, we're going to copy in uh, the color from the previous LED. And if we do that for all the LEDs, basically we've moved every LED up by one, or the color of every one up by one. So let's upload that and see what that looks like. Now you can see that's way, way too fast. Um, it is doing what we're asking it to do, but it just looks like a bit of a mess because it's just running as fast as it possibly can. So let's use our um, every n milliseconds functions again. So every n milliseconds. Uh, and let's go for, say, 50. So we're going to wrap it um, in this function. Much better, a little bit more relaxing there than it was initially. And of course, we can play with that number to, to speed it up or slow it down. So again, we're using every n milliseconds instead of delay because this is non-blocking. It means your code can be getting on and doing other things uh, while it's waiting for those 50 milliseconds to elapse. Really, really important if you're using things like buttons or inputs, um, or even if you just want other patterns to keep playing whilst you're waiting for something else to change. In the HSV color space, uh, you can adjust the value or brightness of each pixel. But what if you wanted to change the overall brightness of your strip? You don't want to have to go through everything you've written and adjust the value for each one. Instead, we can use fastled.setbrightness. And I've had this at the top of pretty much all of the scripts uh, that I've used so far. As usual, uh, this function takes a uint8 underscore t or a, a value from 0 to 255, um, with 0 being a minimum brightness, which is off, and 255 being full brightness. So let's add a feature to this code here uh, where we can adjust the overall brightness on the fly. There are many ways to do this, uh, but I've chosen to use a 10K potentiometer to control the brightness. The value doesn't matter that much, but somewhere between 10 and 100K is about right. The potentiometer needs to be wired up as shown here, uh, with the two outside pins connected to 5 volts and ground, uh, and the middle pin connected to an analog input. Um, I've chosen A1 here. I've added a new define at the top here, so define pop pin or potentiometer pin uh, to be A1. Uh, and then we need to add a few lines into our loop here. So the first thing we need to do is to read the potentiometer pin. Then um, we want to create a, a variable called brightness. And what we're going to do is we're going to map this potentiometer read. So remember, the potentiometer reading value is going to be between 0 and 1023. But the fastled.setbrightness function expects an 8-bit integer, in other words, a value between 0 and 255. Now, I don't want the brightness here to go all the way up to 255 because it's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to map 0 to 1023 to 0 to 255 instead. Then all we have to do is call fastled.setbrightness brightness, and uh, we should be able to control the brightness of the strip here just using the potentiometer. And as you can see, as I turn that up and down, uh, the strip's getting brighter and dimmer. So really simple to add overall brightness control to your project. Let's now have a look at color correction. Although our eyes see uh, red, green, and blue, uh, they're more sensitive to green, where the red and green receptors overlap, than the other two colors. You can see the peak uh, on this image just here uh, is about 560-ish nanometers. So that's the frequency that our eyes are most sensitive to. This means that any color you display on the strip uh, can look a little bit too green. Uh, this is the most obvious when the LED is set to white. 
And we can alter this by using FastLED's set correction function. All strips will be different. So the way to use this is to try the various options and see what works best for you. Um, I've written a quick sketch here. And what this does is this applies the three main options uh, one after the other. First, we have uncorrected color. Uh, then we have typical LED strip, and then we have typical pixel string. Uh, I've also changed the color uh, of the first pixel here so we can see which one we're displaying uh, each time. You then want to point the strip at a white sheet of paper and see which correction, if any, uh, best represents white light. Uh, looking at this, in my case, the uncorrected color looks a little bit too blue. Uh, typical LED strip looks a little bit too purple. And uh, typical pixel string, to me, is the closest to a neutral white. It might not come out so well on the camera. So I would add this to the setup function uh, as shown up here. We can also change the color temperature of the strip. You might have heard of color temperature when choosing an LED light bulb uh, for your house. Confusingly, the higher the color temperature is, the cooler the white light will appear. And the lower the color, the warmer the light will appear. Candlelight is a very warm color to it and has a temperature of about 1900 Kelvin. Whereas midday sunlight will be closer to 5700 Kelvin. I've written a quick example here to cycle through uh, the various color temperature corrections. Um, I've also used one of those every n functions again. You can see every n seconds there to step through it one second at a time. Uh, it's usually fine not to add any temperature correction at all, uh, but the functions are there if you need to use them. And they would normally be put in the setup function at the top of your sketch. I think that's enough on color for today. Uh, as usual, I really hope that was helpful and that maybe you learned something. Uh, in the next video, though, we'll look at color in a little bit more detail uh, and explore FastLED's brilliant uh, palette and palette blending functions. If you'd like to know when that comes out, uh, subscribe to the channel. It'd be very much appreciated. Uh, all the best, and I'll see you next time.